Uh, my name is Doug Hagstrom. I uh, work for Basel Area Business Innovation, and today's topic is on in academic and industry collaborations in the Basel area. And we have with us people from the University of Basel, the FHNV, and uh, the DBSSE, who will be presenting their institutions, and will also be doing uh, a deep dive into one of the projects, which is an example of academic and industry collaboration. So the, what will, as we, we've spoken about the recording already, so I'd like to welcome everyone uh, here who will be presenting. Uh, so Alessandro Massetti and Andrea Banfi from the University of Basel, give us a wave and say hello, and you'll come to the top of, of, the, of the video screen. Hello, Andrea. Hello, okay. Alessandro here. Yeah, uh, and Andrea uh, and Philip from the DBSSE. Hello. Hi. Good to see you. Great. And then we have uh, a, a whole team from uh, the FHNV coming live from the lab, uh, Johannes, Maurizio and Mariam. Mm -hmm. Hello, everyone. Okay. Yeah. Sitting in three different rooms, but there's a whole team yes. in the lab. Yeah. Um, and we have Gabriela and Joachim joining from EMEA, who um, are joining uh, with via team. So they're coming via Maurizio. So we'll... we'll um, introduce them uh, when we get to that section, the Kokoro presentation. And my name is Doug Hagstrom, and uh, also I think Adrian Springer is somewhere as well, uh, who runs the uh, entrepreneurship program with Basel Area. So that's who we are presenting. Um, I'd like to hear a little bit about um, who you are. Uh, and so I will start a poll in shortly. Um, to, and I'd like you to say sort of who else is here. So are you academia where you have, you're just interested in collaboration? You may be academia with a specific question. You may be academia in a collaboration which is going amazing and you'd like to tell us about it or in a collaboration and want to know what happened. Um, the same for industry. Uh, and choice number seven is you're just here for the opera. Or I think actually number eight is if you have another explanation. So feel free to do that. Um, you can answer in the chat or um, there's a poll here, which uh, I have just launched. So if you want to um, vote directly in the poll, we can see that. And while the last couple of people uh, are voting, um, for those of you who registered early for the event, um, you, you described a little bit about what you were interested already. Um, and this is a, a word cloud bit from that. And, and uh, you know, collaboration, industry projects, academia, I think, I think we're in the right place. Uh, so hopefully we can, um, we can have a good, good conversation. And... If there's anything uh, else you're interested in, then um, you know, let us know in the chat. So we've almost all voted now. So I'll just uh, share the results. Where the, um, the we're general interest in, in collaboration seems to be the theme. Uh, and we, we're sort of evenly matched with academia and industry. So, a successful start for collaboration, I think, if we've got roughly 50-50 of the people here uh, and two people here for the APRO. So that's, uh, that's maybe slightly disappointing for them, but um, it's good to see why people come to our events. So that's, if people have any other questions, feel free to, to put in the chat um, uh, and, uh, and go there. So... The next thing we're going to do is talk a little bit about the background on the institutions that are here today. And I'll start uh, with Basel area, and then uh, I'll just, first of all, stop sharing the poll results. Uh, and then, so I'll give you a brief background on Basel area, and then we'll go through each of the institutions and how they uh, organize to collaborate with industry. 
So Basel Area Business and Innovation. Um, we're the investment and innovation promotion uh, agency in the region. We try and help uh, businesses to succeed in, in, in the region. And the way we do that is for each of the initiatives that we have is sort of six different things. The first is we try and create a community um, of the people, so to understand who, who is there and, and, and who's uh, playing in the field. We organise events to bring those people together. We organise catalyst projects when there are specific questions we'd like to solve together. We run acceleration and entrepreneurship programs to help support uh, startups and, and companies to grow. Uh, and foreign direct investment is an investment promotion is bringing companies to the region that we think would be of interest. And we also have collaborative workspaces. So we have um, a space in, in Jura and Delimont. We have also um, in Ausfield and also in the city of Basel at both De Forstrasse and also at the Nevada's campus. And the goal there is to, is to bring people together. So, um, and we do that around three different initiatives. One is base launch, which is a, about uh, therapeutic innovation. Uh, day one, which is healthcare innovation, which is where I have my day job, uh, where I run the accelerator program and industrial transformation, um, which is the other one of our focus areas. Um, these are a bit more about who we are. So we're sort of the agency to support companies. Um, but, and the, the, the most important thing is we also sort of have a powerful network. And that's what today is really about. It's um, our goal is to help businesses succeed. Um, and the way we do that is connecting it to the network. So today is an example of that um, collaboration and connection um, where we're hopefully bringing together some uh, industry and academia. So that's, Basel area. I'd now like to hand over to Maurizio, uh, to, not Maurizio, to uh, Alessandro, who is going to uh, talk about the University of Basel. So, Alessandro, please share your presentation. Thank you, Doug. I'll try to share my screen. I hope you all can see my slides well, while I can also still see you. So, here it, here it is. Please let me know if you can see it. That's all good, just in presentation mode would be great. Perfect, so it's fine like this. Uh, you can click the presentation mode on PowerPoint and then we'll see it slightly bigger. Okay, because I already clicked, so it's because I see it in the presentation mode. Ah, uh, okay. So oh. Then we're collaboratively seeing Alessandro's second screen, so. Ah, yeah, okay, swap, <laughs> swap presenter is good. Swap uh, presenter. So this now should be better. Right. Over to you, Alessandro. Okay. Thank you. Sorry for the uh, technical. Yes. Uh, though, Alessandro, you're only sharing half your screen now. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, better now? No. Yeah. Yes. Now we're good. Now it's good. So you can see my presentation, right? Yes. yes. But I cannot see it. <laughs> now, still? Yeah, still yeah. fine. Still fine. Still so see it. Now you first should slide. see my first slide, which yes, I would do. like to start not just uh, telling you and maybe boring you yet about how amazing is the University of Basel and all our scientists, department of faculties, which of course they are truly amazing and also here to tell it for themselves. I would like to, to tell you about a bit uh, the innovation office that I represent and in my role as the enabler of uh, collaboration with, between industry and academia and facilitating that. So in the innovation office, what really keeps up at night is really to bring our innovation uh, potential and our community together with enough deal flow and success story to attract really the companies to work with us in, in the broader spirit of collaboration, also with the other academic institution in the region, a bit with entrepreneurial spirit, with a willing of being excellent and to foster diversity in, in all the ways it, that, it, that it means. So uh, transdip, transdisciplinary approach, for example, or also diverse approach between industry, academia, and, and many different aspects. And at the same time, to put ourselves at the difficult interface of industry and academia, because for me, it's important to say that it's also not always straightforward to build this collaboration. We are really here willing to help to build this network, this connection, and to build also new models to make this happen. So to say for us, it's important to build a bit of a critical mass on top of the scientific excellence that we have, or we think we have, and to build 
an entrepreneurial culture that really is striving of, for doing excellence together and to enable this collaboration. So uh, in the end, what we try to do and why we come to work in the morning is really to understand deeply the needs of the industry that approaches us or that we outreach to build tailor-made collaboration models because we strongly believe that there's no one recipe that fits all cases and at the same time tap into our local network which is well represented here today and also our global outreach network in many different countries from South Korea, India, Africa, the lower middle income countries, Brazil, US, etc. And so that's exactly what we are trying to do and we're trying to support him by deep understanding of the challenges that the companies face to try to bring this together with the most effective collaborative model case by case and tapping into this uh, beneficial network of local and, and global partners, which we believe are all excellent in science. So this, this said, I will give you a little bit of flavors of what the University of Basel is excellent at doing, or we perceive it's excellent at doing. This, you know, is just a small uh, graphical picture of it. We have excellent uh, basic research and translational re research in many of our faculties and departments, uh, talking about life science and pharmaceutical technologies, biomedical engineering, and also with affiliated institutes like the Swiss Tropical and Public Health Institute, we, we really try to encompass everything from the lab to the, to the patient. And at the same time, we are very strong in some basic science like physics, chemistry, and everything nanoscience. These are very strong focus of our university. This we can you know, talk and discuss later on or separately more in detail if you have specific question about this. But what I want also mostly to say is that we really believe it's important for us to get the feeling that we are open to co-create and build collaborative projects and platform with companies and with other academic institutions. And to give you uh, two uh, examples, what we are doing, what we have been doing recently is, for example, uh, on the more the health system strengthening access to medicine. We are building a public-private partnership, which I'm not fully free to tell you all the details, but that's what we are doing now uh, to really bring uh, prediction, disease prediction, diagnostic and treatment and really actual impact in the health in low and middle income countries with a backbone that is really real world evidence and data driven. Another example is the Center for Human Advanced Regeneration and Mobility in Education and Discovery, where we want really to support excellent groundbreaking discoveries from academia and industry to regenerate mobility. So this is about regenerative medicine. And of course, we are open to have your project here as the, as the next one, uh, wherever you come from, if it's uh, aimed at tackling an industry or a societal challenge, we are here to facilitate with our network, our connection and our willingness to make it happen. So please, if you are interested in this, reach out to me. I will be really looking forward to build innovation together with all of you. Thank you. So back to Doug. Thanks, Alessandro. Um, that was a great uh, invitation. So you'll have a chance in the breakout rooms uh, to ask Alessandro some more questions and, and get to know more about the University of Basel. Um, I'd now like to hand over to Johannes, who will, uh, who's from the FHNB, who will present a little bit on the work that they do and how they interact with industry. Mm -hmm. Thanks much, Doug. Also, share my screen. I'm really excited um, that Basel area actually hosts such a um, workshop. And I see that um, I think you, we are covering um, points one and two of your activities and maybe there is even chance for point three that you once host a catalyst project um, in such a public-private partnership here in the local area. I'm um, with my 20 years of pharma company experience here in the Basel area now at the University of Applied Sciences and Arts in northwestern Switzerland. FHNW, the School of Life Sciences. And before having been in pharma, I was super interested in uh, collaborating with academia, um, doing um, 
partnerships, uh, co-creation, what Alessandro mentioned. And I was always surprised how many skills um, are here very close to the footstep um, of, your, of your door, be it big pharma, be it a small biotech. Um, and I want to bring that across a little bit further. So what do we have here? Um, what are the skills infrastructures that you could expect? Um, University of Applied Sciences actually has a couple of um, places where we are, um, just to put my pointer on here. I hope you see that. So we have um, schools in Basel, in Solothurn, in Alton, in Brookwindisch, and a brand new campus in Mutens, which you probably can see from the rail station on. And the School of Life Sciences actually has three floors in that um, new campus uh, building. Um, plus a process technology center where we also produce multi-kilogram um, production. So you can even test some of your um, things, uh, be it a biotech, um, be it a, a chemical production in a sort of pilot um, production site. We have about now 600 students, almost uh, 200 employees and uh, more than 5,000 square meters of lab space. And infrastructure-wise, I also start with something that Alexand Alessandro mentioned, which is quite strong, is the nanotechnology. And we will hear also an example of that um, later from Maurizio. But we also have chemistry, we have biology, we um, do biomarker research, uh, diagnostics, we have uh, process engineering, we have medical technologies, data uh, science, and um, last but not least to mention also environmental technologies in the Ecopreneur Institute. We actually have four institutes in our uh, school, uh, the Institute of Ecopreneurship, um, Medical Engineering and Informatics. We have the Chemistry and Bioanalytics, very large institute, and I am in the Pharma Technology Institute. And we collaborate in these institutes all together in quite holistic approach. So uh, we're trying to move uh, um, and advance diagnostics. Uh, we do, um, for example, formulation research for therapeutics. Um, we um, aim for um, new medical devices up to regulatory approval, um, do data science and big data analysis, collaborating with DARK and Basel area in the day one. Um, and we have the environment, uh, water pollution, other ecopreneurship activities up to sustainability. So those are the areas of, um, of our interest and research. And there are many types of collaborations that you could do with us um, in our collaboration landscape. And here are just the um, most uh, important ones. If you want to start something really quickly and easily, a bachelor thesis would be something uh, which is low investment, uh, low costs for you. Um, of course, it's um, with six months, also not that complex. Um, there are master's studies that can be done at your place or um, here in our institutes that are already a bit longer. The advantage of those studies is that our students always come with some lab, pra lab practice already. Uh, many of them have already apprenticeships done, Rosh Novartis apprentice um, or the hospital, so they they know what they're doing from day one on. Um, our um, colleagues are consulting you on your projects with their expertise. And we have a large part of contract research as well, which is probably the most expensive, but then also the one which uh, remains all the information and all the IP with you. There are lots of third party projects. Uh, we have InnoSwiss projects uh, with specific partners. Uh, we have the SNF and SNI projects, and Maritza will give you an example of such an SNI project. And we have um, on top of that also EU projects and global projects, um, for example, in this ecopreneurship on water pollution and others. And if you want to know more about that, um, you can um, go into a breakout room number two, where my colleague Marion is waiting for you to answer all the questions. She's our tech transfer officer in the School of Life Sciences. Here's her email address if you want to contact her directly. Um, or you can go to room number three, where I will waiting and can also answer some more of your scientific questions. Thanks for the attention. And back to you, Doug. Thank you, Johannes. And uh, before anyone asks in the chat, yes, we will share the presentations afterwards.
um, so you'll have those those contact details and and you can you can share them with other people. So I'd now to hand over to Andrea from the uh, DBSSE uh, to give her view on uh, a collaboration. Okay, thank you, Doug. I'm trying to good. share my screen here. Looks good. Okay, so um, thanks. My name is Andrea huber brusamle I'm from the Department of Biosystems Science and uh, Engineering. And as such, we are, um, no, we're not really moving on. Uh, we are one of 16 departments of the ETH Zurich and we're the only one not localized in Zurich, but here in Basel. And as you can see right now, we're still localized in the um, uh, Rosenthal campus, but in about two years from now, we're supposed to move uh, up here to uh, the Chalet Metterli right next to the Biozentrum and the hospital. So we're looking very much forward to that. And that will also, hope, as we hope, uh, really give another push in the, in the networking, in the, in the collaborations that we're already doing now. So who are we? We are about uh, 330 people at a department, 19 professorships, and about half of our staffs are really the doctoral students that are the main um, workforce also. Uh, what are we doing at the, the BSSC? We're really interested in biosystems and biosystems are designed in a very broad way. This can be a simple yeast cell, can go over um, mammalian cells, entire blood system, for example, but also it can go up to entire population systems as uh, some of our um, researchers are doing population genetics, for example, also with uh, the viral um, crisis that we're dealing with right now. So our researchers are interested in the rational design and programming of complex biological systems as they um, define them. And we have three areas that we are uh, experts in or that experts are working in. Biology, so the understanding of complex processes. Then the engineers who want to engineer those complex processes to, to alter them, to make them adaptable for therapy, for example and the computational um, area where we have a lot of machine learning going on, but also uh, modeling of these complex processes to again, feed back the idea of how to engineer those um, processes. How do we collaborate? As you can see here, of course, we have a lot of international partners. We do a lot in Basel already with the university and also the, the hospital. And of course, a lot of industry collaboration both with the um, large partners in Basel, but also with smaller companies that are localized here in Basel or in Zurich and also worldwide. We also have, uh, since our institute got, our department got funded here in Basel since 2007, we have 11 spin-offs that were generated from our department. And of course, some of them are still young and uh, tiny, but others have grown in size quite a lot. And I think one of them is uh, already earmarked for the next installment of this uh, networking event here in Sparrow, which is a large company by now and already can uh, show quite a bit of uh, successful um, research and, and development. Now, of course, we stay in close contact with our spin-offs, collaborations are, are going on there. We are a research department, so with all those collaborations and, and contract issues, we do get a lot of support from our tech transfer office in Zurich. They, they support us in, in that. But how do we uh, collaborate and interact? Uh, a lot of them are direct, direct co collaborations where researchers from industry directly hook up with uh, professors or um, other researchers at our department. Of course, the spin-offs, as I've already said, and then we're uh, part, uh, partner in, in several joint initiatives. And I'd like to mention just two here that I think are very important also for the Basel area. This is the NCCR, Molecular Systems and Engineering, that we're um, hosting together with the University of Basel. And the more recent uh, funding of the Bodna Research Center for Child Health, where the idea is to really bring together University of Basel, ETH, the hospitals, but also, of course, the industry partners. And then networking is very important for us. And I'm uh, very proud to, to say that our DBCC Meets Industry is an initiative that was initiated by our doctoral students and postdocs 
has been very uh, important in, in getting this event up and running today. Philip Koch and David Schweingruber are also in the call and they will be in the, I think, um, breakout session number three, where you can then ask them a bit more about uh, direct interactions with the industry. And with this, I'm already at the end. Uh, we're happy to answer your questions either in the breakout rooms or also later directly by email. And with this, I right. stop my presentation and give back to you, Dirk. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrea. And thank you to uh, all of, of our presenters who've um, shared the, the, the start of, of today, which is about how you can, can interact with each of the institutions. We're now uh, not going to go to the breakout rooms, but more to the Kokoro presentation. So this is an opportunity to do a deep dive and understand how one of these collaborations has happened uh, and what they've achieved. So I will hand over to Maurizio from the FHNB team, who will uh, host the uh, exciting discussion with the, the Kokoro team. Hello, I am Lucy from FHNW and I will interview Mauricio about this Kokoro project. Hello. <laughs> Mauricio, and you are directly to Kokoro project at the School of Life Science. And um, could you introduce yourself and the project in Georgia? Yes. Okay, I'm Maurizio Dumo, as you said. I'm a physicist by the background and I did my PhD on nanotechnology and uh, continued a bit more into bioengineering. And I'm very happy and very pleased to uh, be able to lead uh, the COCOLA project, which is a SNI uh, project from Nano Argovia, funded by Nano Argovia. The project consortium is uh, very uh, interesting as it shows a bridge between the uh, um, basic research from the university towards the industry and uh, that's where we are like three entities. We have the uh, University of Basel which is for the basic research and the University of Applied Sciences in Odessa, Switzerland which is reaching towards OMIA which is our industry partner. So um, I will maybe give uh, the words to uh, Anna and Andrea, they can shortly introduce uh, and themselves as well. Yeah. Hi. So uh, my name is Anna Marsano. I'm uh, there is a, a group, the group leader of the cardiac surgery and engineering group here at the University of Basel at the Department of Biomedicine. Andrea. Hello. My name is Andrea Banfi. I'm a medical doctor by training, uh, but uh, here I lead uh, since many years the group of cell engine therapy, and our focus is on uh, vascular biology, understanding how blood vessels grow, and then translate that into rational approaches possibly to grow blood vessels where people need them in tissue or engineered tissue. Okay. Then maybe the word uh, to Omia, our uh, industry partner. Maybe I switch quickly the screens. Let's see. If that works, no problem. Stop and then to Okay. So you're now on the screen, Joachim and uh, Gabriela. Maybe you can quickly say a word, introduce yourself. They cannot hear us. Yes, we can. Oh, ah, okay. <laughs> I'm Joachim Schölkopf. I'm a group leader at OMIA. My group is called New Applications Research. Uh, and as the name implies, we are looking for new applications for our mineral particles. Uh, I have a PhD in physical chemistry and uh, did a lot of work on capillarity effects and so on. And I am since unbelievable 30 years with OMIA. That's it. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm Gabriela Mel. I'm a chemical engineer uh, as my bachelor's. Then I did my PhD in materials and metallurgy. And I'm working for new application research in different areas uh, for OMIA. We are not only working for like biomaterials, but also for pharma. Uh, 
construction, agriculture, uh, packaging, and some other areas. So, yeah, and now we are here also working for this core project, which is quite interesting for us. Okay, thank you very much. So, and um, what, what exactly is your organic work and what does the policy explain? Okay, so uh, the project is about the uh, city reconstruction of Saudi Arabia. And uh, the idea came about if you want to reconstruct big pieces, I think it's like the heart. If you want to reconstruct a big uh, part of this picture, maybe like this size, it will be very difficult in handling. So we thought that we need kind of a support. And uh, what came to our mind was the paper, because we can have two different uh, applications of this. So I can imagine to put all your PC layers on that to reconstruct the heart. But then if you want to make this heart contract, you see this will be very stiff, right? And then we came up with the idea, why don't we make it like a Japanese origami, like folded shapes. And instead of having a very rigid piece of paper, we can have it folded like this. And you can see. Oh, yes, and then the paper will have two, actually three uh, functions. One is a technical support, and one is a mechanical function as well. And the third function will be to then put nanostructures on the surface, which will also help to align uh, the muscle cells so they can contract in a new way. And the kokoro actually is Japanese and stands for heart. So it's kind of this uh, origami, Japanese, and heart combination. Okay. And what is the ultimate goal of the project? Is it for in vitro studies or for implantation? The very ultimate goal, I would say, is uh, for implantation, but this is a long term goal. So you can imagine if you have a diseased part, uh, which you uh, have some parts which are diseased, you can then reconstruct your tissue and then kind of put it there and replace the, uh, the diseased tissue. This is the very ultimate goal. For a very uh, more uh, near goal, it would be to uh, to have a small heart model and uh, to use that heart model for for uh, medicine development, for example. So you can imagine if you have this patch shape, which can then be folded around into something which looks like this, you can then kind of reconstruct a policy uh, heart or something that looks like a heart. Then use that for Doing a drugs studies medicine development. Yeah. Where are the projects and currently stand? Yeah, for now we are having the, all the layers, all the tissues separately, and we're now combining it to the paper and folding the model into 3D. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what is the biggest challenge? The biggest challenge, I would say, for now is uh, the lifetime. We have to see how long. Uh, we can keep the heart alive, the mus muscle tissue alive, and for that we, we need a whole complicated or an advanced system of uh, vasculars uh, to keep the tissue alive. For example. Yeah. What type of mus muscle tissue do you use? We use uh, muscle cells uh, from uh, animals sometimes, but I can then give the word to Anna, which can maybe say a, a word about what kind of muscles we use to reconstruct our tissue. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So thank you. Um, so what we are, um, I want just to share. Um, so what we are trying to, uh, we aim to generate is a, a cardiac uh, tissue, a heart muscle, and uh, we are now using a neonatal rat cardiomyocytes, so uh, animal origin uh, cardiomyocytes and uh, to regenerate in vitro, to generate in vitro a cardiac functional contractile tissue. And uh, this is a complex tissue made of cardiomyocytes, fibroblasts, what we are using, and uh, definitely it's needed also the component of the vasculature. These, uh, um, these uh, cells that we are using are not fully uh, uh, adult, they are not fully mature, and uh, our aim in uh, the Kokoro project is to bring uh, uh, the full maturation of these uh, 
uh, fetal, neonatal uh, phenotype of cardiomyocytes into a fully uh, functional cardiomyocytes in, in adult cell that is uh, fully functional and contractile, well organized, uh, re resembling the organization in the native heart. And uh, to have uh, such organization that uh, is uh, mimicking uh, the uh, native structure of the heart, is important to use uh, micro patterning. Like before, uh, Maurizio said, we will using uh, nanotechnologies to try to align and to um, uh, organize uh, the cardiomyocytes, and having also topo uh, topological and uh, cues to uh, instruct the cells to further mature and organize in a three dimensional uh, structure. Thanks also to the uh, nice origami structure that we will use uh, uh, as a support, as previously said to Maurizio, from Maurizio. Thank you. Thank you. So the thick muscle tissue needs to be supplied with blood. How do you do that? Yes, for that we are also putting a, a advanced vascular system on top of the layer and between the layers, so to irrigate uh, the muscle tissues uh, with uh, nutrients. And for that, maybe Andrea can quickly say a word. They are in charge of doing that. Yes, absolutely. Um, I will not share any, um, mm -hmm. any slides, uh, but can I will. Hear you? Uh -oh. mm -hmm. I am unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes? You yes, can we hear you well. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I'm not going to share any, any slides, but uh, um, fundamentally, um, to build, uh, uh, we need to build uh, fundamentally a vascular network so to grow blood vessels uh, in vitro where there are no blood vessels to come from. So this has to be some kind of a universal vessel growth area. And the universal vascular growth process in the body is when you have uh, uh, wound, uh, wound repair and regeneration. When you wound yourself, the first thing that happens is that there is bleeding and then the blood clot forms with fibrin. And fibrin really provides a matrix for universal tissue repair, including blood vascular growth. So what we are doing is we are using a fibrin matrix as a universal repair matrix, uh, but we decorate, we put in, of course, endothelial cells, but then drawing on uh, the understanding of how blood vessels grow and how they are regulated uh, uh, from a signaling point of view, um, we are decorating this matrix uh, with uh, the correct uh, Vas uh, growth factor signals to assemble these uh, uh, endothelial and smooth muscle cells into appropriate uh, vascular networks. And to do that, uh, we use an um, uh, engineered version of the recombinant proteins uh, that have been fused with uh, some peptide so that uh, it can allow to cross-link into the fibrin and provide, therefore, with a, net, uh, with a microenvironment uh, which has the right signal environment for the endothelial cells to assemble into a vascular network. Okay, I just uh, <laughs> was kicked out of the meeting. Let's see. Okay, you're back, Maurizio. I'm okay. back. Great, <laughs> just in time. Uh, I didn't uh, hear the answer of Andrea, but I'm sure he did it very well. <laughs> yes, and, and and we can hear you a little bit louder now as well, which is good. So oh, if you speak okay. loud and clear. That would be great. Okay, great. So the question is answered. Yes, about the, yes. Okay, yes. good. So um, let's talk about the collaboration. How did the collaboration come about? Yes, that was uh, maybe, yeah, very untypical. Um, we went, uh, we had this idea with the origami and uh, using paper as a scaffold. And I was looking uh, for somebody who could provide us uh, with special papers and also put nano patterns on them and maybe do some fiber things alignments with them and uh, when I was looking around of, uh, we were so lucky that actually the champion of uh, paper manufacturing of the big ones is just around the corner and this is Omia and we, uh, uh, we I went there and uh, proposed this project and I was lucky that they liked it and then we got them on board. Okay yeah. great. So but maybe so, we can also ask them how yeah. they see it. Let's see. And the, the hard model is made of cellulose <laughs> paper. So what does the application of such paper I think we may have 
lost Maurizio or Maurizio has frozen briefly. Um, and uh, Maurizio is, is our path uh, to EMEA. So um, uh, hopefully we can um, get there. Um, Anna or Andrea, would you like to um, add something now that we've lost um, Maurizio? Which is a bit disappointing. Um, but uh, Anna or Andrea, do you want to uh, pick up and, and give some more background on uh, that specific question around Amir and, and how they've helped? What question exactly, sorry? Um, around uh, the, uh, how uh, you've worked with Amir and the paper folding. Um, well, it was I'll, the, I'll try and get Maurizio back yeah, on. Yeah, sure. Um, maybe I can briefly start and uh, say that uh, actually um, never in my life I would have imagined uh, as a biomedical researcher uh, to collaborate with a paper company. That really uh, was bad. Uh, I discovered very many interesting things uh, and uh, this uh, uh, paper folding technique, uh, I think, is, uh, is genius. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing. Uh, the way you can really create a tech... A, a, how do you say, a flexible and still uh, uh, resistant structure um, out of uh, paper fundamentally, uh, which then you can decorate with the, with the, with the biological components, uh, is, um, is, is very, very interesting. I'm very happy uh, to have had the occasion to be part of it. But they're back. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, Thank it's you. like Murphy's Law. Huh? It's, it was working already finally 40 minutes and now it's continuously crashing. But let's see. Maybe you have a question also for Omnia about yeah. the, yeah? So um, the hard model is made of cellulose paper. What does the application of such paper look like? And is there a future for it in the paper industry? Should I answer? Yes, please. please. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> of course, what is quite funny, I mean, the normal paper industry is very, very big scale. The normal paper machine makes many, many kilometers of paper every day. And here we are in a totally different area. Um, to make the type of paper as could be used in, in this project, actually what is needed is a very small machine because even if this tech technology really flourishes in the, in the future, it, it will never be on a real big paper machine because it's a totally different dimension. And this is why I think it will be maybe a very a small niche. And of course, normal paper is really cheap, but uh, a paper made specifically for that purpose we have here as a substrate for for cells of course will not be cheap because we have to use some very special uh -oh. Hello, I'd, um, I'd, 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 I'd like to thank Danny for his, uh, or his or her uh, view on, on this, which is this is an exciting, suspenseful uh, presentation uh, talking about uh, this project. What I'd actually like to do while we've lost Maurizio and, and he, he tries to come back um, is if we could put uh, in the chat any questions you have. Uh, hello, female Danny. Um, put some questions in the chat that you'd have for Andrea or, or Anna or Ma Maurizio or uh, the Amaya team when, when we get them back um, about, the, about the project itself. So um, your question and uh, who you'd like to answer it. And if it's Andrea or Anna, then we can, we can get going straight away.
Oh, I'm just going to work on the admin side of things and, and trying to get Maurizio back. Maurizio, are you back? Um, we have a, a, a general question, which um, could be for uh, Anna or Andrea, but it could also be for um, Alessandro or um, Andrea or, or Johannes. On, there was a question from Jeppe, uh, who has question around how best to uh, start a collaboration when you're actually coming from outside of Switzerland? What would be a place to start? I can maybe say something about that if if anyone doesn't have any contrary. Uh, for it. So I would say it depends a bit if there is a very specific. Uh, question or a very specific scientific or technical question that an already identified research group by the company outside of, of Switzerland is really exploring or if it's a more general collaboration um, request. In both cases, uh, maybe the, a, a good way would be to get in touch with us, with uh, us from the innovation office or tech transfer offices. So in the case of UniBasel, it would be me. Uh, DBSSC would be Andrea. The uh, FINV would be Marion, uh, I, I guess. And so, yes, just get in touch with us. We are really open, open to understand your needs and get your question and really yeah. enable this and help the exploration. Yeah. 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 All right. We're so we are very <laughs> sorry. It's in Jolico. It's in Jolico. Yeah. 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 The, the, the good news is that uh, this, is an, uh, this is an advertisement for life sciences rather than uh, uh, the internet industry or, or, uh, or the ICT industry. So, um, Maurizio. Are you here or have you frozen again? I suspect we've got Maurizio freezing again. Um, all right. I um, uh, suggest <laughs> We keep moving uh, and uh, we will create uh, a breakout room for those of you who are interested in uh, the deep dive on Kokoro where um, Anna and Andrea will be and hopefully Maurizio and, and the team. Uh, Maurizio. Yeah. Are you back? Hello. Have, ha, have yeah, you... Have you yeah, solved the problem? Yeah, has some problems with the network, so the whole Wi-Fi is crashing permanently. <laughs> That's great. Okay. <laughs> so uh, probably the interview session is not over, I guess. Huh? Um, or... I, I think if there's anything you want to um, uh, sum up uh, on, and then we can maybe have some questions from the audience. We have a, a question around 3D architecture. Um, from Kamal, but it, maybe if you just want to summarize, uh, make a, a short conclusion, and then we'll get to, to uh, questions from the audience. Yeah, maybe some words about the collaboration. I mean, uh, how is it going on? How is like the mode we collaborate? So we are very uh, independent. We are kind of free. Do you hear me? No, your internet connection is unstable. We hear you. Uh, think we don't need to be told that your internet connection is unstable. Um, I, I, I will... Um, Maybe switching off the video? 
Yeah, Maurizio, switch yeah. off the video, I think. We put, we put it on the, on the LAN now. We switched off the Ethernet, the Wi-Fi, and now we're on LAN normally. Maybe it works better. Okay. I hope, yeah. So uh, maybe some word about the collaboration, how, it, how we do it. We meet every three months, roughly. So this is a two-year project. So every three months we meet and then we exchange uh, on the big lines and how is it going on, breathing. But uh, different uh, groups on the different topics communicate uh, between each other and uh, exchange there. So it's not a very, uh, let's say, very tough, a very, very near following. It's a kind of freedom there going on. That's very nice. So, but every three months we keep touch and uh, see how it's working. Maybe a short meeting, one hour or 30 minutes to see how it's going and everyone is a bit presenting. This is about the mode, how we collaborate, if this is interesting to see for the uh, industrial partners as well, how that is done in our case. Just the last question, is the regional proximity an advantage? I think in, the ca in our case, as I said, because we uh, were looking for this paper manufacturer and we uh, were very lucky that there was one uh, around the corner that was very, very nice because else if you had to go to China or the US it would have been a bit complicated. And also that uh, the pool here in Basel is very excellent in biology and we are very lucky that we can have two experts in this tissue engineering for vascular and for muscle cells just around the corner. And it helps a lot if you want to exchange cells. If you, for example, with the paper scaffolds, we're going to the University of Basel, it takes us maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and then we can do the experiments there or they come to us with cells if we want to bioprint them. So it's very uh, helpful, yes. Okay, good, and I was talking in the neon. Oh, okay, great. That's it. Now Duff is out, maybe. <laughs> Here, I was just uh, trying to answer okay. a chat question. So, uh, in, in, in the chat, we will add uh, uh, after the breakout rooms, all of the, the details, and, and as I said, you'll get a... Um, uh... okay. All right, welcome back. Um... Uh, the, um, the speed with which people return um, <laughs> is both a measure of how exciting the conversation was and sort of where in the conversation it was broken up so yeah. it's we're, I we're, see the other breakout rooms on the other two pieces yeah. but the, our wife is still crashing all the time it's incredible okay. yeah. yeah murphy wow. murphy murphy yes um uh, yeah uh, something hope it was not to, <laughs> to, to learn the next time <laughs> now one thing that's actually surprisingly good uh except for when it doesn't work is actually just using a hotspot from your phone is often stable enough to do okay. um, uh, rather than finding a cable to plug into a computer uh, yeah, yeah but uh we mm -hmm. we learn something yes oh. anyway maurizio is back <laughs> yes, yes. Back. <laughs> mario not also back good maurizio is back and has got the best wi-fi of the day so far yeah. <laughs> um just both I, I think um, everyone should be back now. Um, so I will uh, just share my screen. Um, so thank you uh, all for successfully dealing with um, breakout rooms and, and having some engaging conversations. I'd just like to ask uh, a brief summary from each of the three rooms, uh, what, you, what you got. Um, out of it and uh, and then so uh, room number one Maurizio yeah I just go ahead before it crashes again so we were mostly uh, talking about what was missing from the interviews on the things which were not clear there and uh, what is the uh, the goal uh, of the of the cardiac uh, model and so on that was mainly that and then also uh, the interest on what it could be used uh, for example, uh, our friend Mattia from 
uh, Roche how he could use it. I asked him what would be interesting, and uh, I think it starts to get uh, into into the good uh, direction for maybe keep in touch with them. We also had a question about uh, how we are looking at the 3D model, how this will re to reconstruct the heart. But actually, uh, maybe this was a misunderstanding. We are not copying a, the uh, physiological form of the heart that the model has it, but more the function with this uh, origami heart. So it, in the end, origami heart doesn't look like a real heart, but it has a kind of mimicking the function of it, a bit to it, yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, room number two, which was uh, about uh, practically how to, uh, to get started, I think. What did you come up with? What was discussed? Who was going to give some feedback from road number two? Maybe. Maybe Alessandro. Hmm? Yeah, we Ale didn't we Alexander. didn't decide it yet, but I can <laughs> step up. <laughs> I'll try not to talk too much as as my usual. Uh, no, basically it was quite interesting. I have to say, uh, the three of us as tech transfer or innovation office people were a bit challenged. I have to say, uh, saying what we were asked, which are the hurdles, not only in the model but also how to make the collaboration with industry, a smooth process and an actual collaboration. So not just a contract where someone owns the IP and someone pays more or less to have the access to it, but really to uh, be uh, partners and bring and build together innovation and bring knowledge and, and bring the skills from both sides, industry and academia to make into a, a big success and something more transformational and, and, and novel. I hope I capture our discussion well enough. Okay. Uh, may, may I add okay. something, Doug? I mean, uh, my feeling is we didn't really get started even to discuss IP issues and I think we might uh, spend some more time on that yeah on a different occasion so yes marion a, a great uh, connection to the to uh the next uh to the to the summary of the day so breakout room number three what did you uh come up with mm -hmm. so i can quickly um, summarize it it's funny that uh, there was actually one point really similar to what alessandro just told us is that um, um that one question was about wouldn't the scientists in the different worlds uh, work much closer and much more um, interconnected together without these stories about IP ownership, uh, benefits, uh, information, and do something better with the patients? Um, and that's a really interesting question. Um, say, wh why do we have that IP and what is sort of the driver of it? Um, and um, so the, the bottom of the heart of our discussion, which was also a bit too short, I think uh, we would have discussed uh, at least uh, the same time again with more enthusiasm about it. Um, can scientists collaborate uh, with a lower threshold um, together jointly? We are in the same region, we have the same goals. Um, one interesting question in the beginning was actually, um, what does academia want? And this is also super interesting. Um, it wasn't the feeling of there is a sort of a customer and then a service. Academia is not a service function. Uh, we have our own research funding. We want to do our um, research purpose. And uh, actually someone from industry said, yeah, we also want to know what is your goal? Um, uh, probably reflecting that most of the brain is actually not in your institute, neither in this private company nor in a specific university, but um, the, the brains are out there. Um, and if we listen to what others bring, maybe we can uh, even be better jointly together. Um, so we can also raise our interest, the academics, um, maybe in a in a challenge, maybe in a um, uh, competition to say, send in your ideas, maybe we have the same ideas and we can collaborate further. That was sort of the consensus. Great. Hope I got it right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, thank you. I mean, I, I think um, uh, that both that and also the feedback from room number, number two sort of lead to um, 
what we're going to do now. Because uh, I think uh, this is the first time we've done it in this kind of format. And uh, I'm uh, personally think that it worked very, very well. Um, we learned some things about uh, internet connectivity. Um, and, uh, but I think we also learned that there's a lot of uh, interest and uh, in talking and, and, and learning more about how we could do things together practically. So uh, our original idea, which was to do this, this kind of thing again, I think uh, is, is true. So uh, we're going to do this again. Um, we're gonna have a similar format as last time, as, sorry, this time. Uh, the topic for the next uh, deep dive session will be in Sphero, uh, which is a microfluidic system for drug discovery, um, which you heard a little bit about earlier from Andrea, that um, this sort of is an example um, coming out of the DBSSC. Uh, Andrea, would you like to share anything to, to whet people's appetites? Uh, thanks, Doug. But I actually think this should be Philip. I mean, he's been in contact with them and he's, uh, you know, as a representative from DBCC um, meets industry, I think it would be great if you, Philip, could say a couple words to that. Um, I just can say that they're very excited to show their insight into this collaboration. Um, there has been one PhD project on this, and uh, I think it's already ready to launch this product, if I'm not mistaken. But they're very excited. And uh, I think it's going to be sometime uh, end of the year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that right? yeah that's right. So we're going to look for um, some time in uh, towards the end of November, beginning of December, uh, and bring this together. And if you have uh, uh, any questions, here are the, the links uh, to people. Uh, and we'll include these also in the confirmation and survey email, which you will get uh, shortly. Uh, within the next day or two, as well as the, pres the presentations will be in there as well. What um, we'd also like to hear from you is what worked today? What would you like to hear more of? What would you like um, to, do, to do more? So what are the topics perhaps that we might have in breakout rooms or that we can um, bring specific experts in to talk about? Um, but I, I think we'll, we'll continue highlighting practical examples with uh, collaborations that we've seen, but we'll also be seeing how we can give you more background and, and learnings about how collaborations can really work. Uh, that's everything from me. And uh, I have a clock here on the wall, which says that we got time almost uh, perfect. So, and that's my job as the host. So uh, that's okay. Um, thank you everyone for dialing in and, and for staying around and for coping with um, our slight technical issues. Look forward to the next discussion uh, and seeing more collaboration in the Basel area. So thank you from me and uh, we will uh, speak soon. You can of course hang around if you'd like to, uh, to join <laughs> off, uh, the APRO where... Right. Cheers. Thank yeah. you very much, Doug. Thanks, 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 Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Also, also to Joachim and Gabriela. I will join Thanks. Maurizio now. Bye. Okay.